Hi, and welcome to PHQ, questions from the personality hacker community. My name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. And let's get right to our question this week. Hey guys, uh, my name is Sarah. I'm an INFP trying to develop my extroverted intuition or what you guys call exploration. So I started doing something new, different, and or uncomfortable every day. The problem is that even though I'm being challenged on a regular basis, I have other things that I have to do as well, like every day, you know, things that I actually have to get accomplished. So by the end of each day, I'm exhausted and have little to no downtime. As an introvert, I feel this is unhealthy. How can INFPs and INTPs develop exploration without compromising alone time. For that matter, how can any introvert develop their secondary process without overextending themselves? I'd be really grateful for any advice. You guys are really awesome, and I love your podcast. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah, for the question. I know when we suggest you as an introvert, if you're listening and you're an introvert, and you hear us say your growth state, the way you grow as a person, is to get into that co-pilot or auxiliary cognitive function to grow... It's an extroverted attitude function. As an introvert, you're like, man, this is a, a lot of hard work. I, I already go through my day being extroverted at work, with my family, other people. And now you're asking me to go and really focus on this and grow this in addition to all the other things I have to do in my life. And it, it feels like I am going to just wear out really fast. And so I, I can imagine you, if you're an introvert listening, saying, I resonate with what Sarah is talking about. I want to just go and at the end of the day, go and hide myself under the covers or grab a good book and a a cup of tea and just read or chill out a little bit. And now you guys are asking me to be even more extroverted to grow. I mean, how how do I reconcile this as an introvert? This is a big challenge for me in my life. I think it's a really good question too, because it does feel like the world forces introverts into extroversion so often that even one more you know, like the straw that bro- broke I the can't camel's even. back. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's that I can't even thing, right? Exactly. I can't even. So there, I think there's a couple things here that should be addressed if you are an introvert attempting to get into your extroverted process for growth. The first is good energy management in and of itself. Yeah. We recorded an entire podcast on personality types and energy management. And I do recommend that you go check out that podcast because it has some, I think it has some pretty good suggestions on how to just do energy management in general. And in particular, you have to remember that it's your dominant cognitive function that is your flow state and is regenerating your batteries. So it's not just introverted time. I think that's one of the mistakes that we make is we think, you know, I'm an introvert, so I just need some alone time. Or I'm an extrovert, I just need to go socialize. And not every introverted process and not every extroverted process is created the same, nor are they fueled by the same things. It's not introvert time that will fuel an INFP. It's introverted feeling time that will fuel an INFP. So just by being alone, maybe like you get home from work and you're tired and you just want to go passively, you know, watch TV for a little while by yourself. That is an introverted activity, but that's not introverted feeling. Passivity is not an introverted feeling activity, so you're not going to actually be regenerating your batteries just by being alone in that moment. You're actually going to have to get into your introverted feeling process, your authenticity process. And that means consulting, you know, going through the day, consulting how you felt about it, doing some journaling, maybe doing some expressive work, creative express, you know, expressive work that indicates what's happening for you. That's actually where you're going to be regenerating your batteries. Um, and people who use introverted feeling as a dominant cognitive function oftentimes will get into flow when they're listening. So listening to podcasts or listening to you know, new content or even sometimes listening to a friend or somebody talk about their experience, reading a biography, something to that effect. That, those are all the things that will regenerate your batteries. It's not just simply being alone. And the same concepts and 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 of course i've just mentioned introverted feeling but there's three other introverted cognitive functions that get energy in different ways introverted thinking it's about learning new information and organizing it in your mind and understanding new concepts it's about really being able to master a data set learning something that will allow you to understand how things work separate from the social component yeah introverted sensing will gain energy by reviewing past memories and by making sure that the world is orderly around you 
by ensuring that you are experiencing good memories and that the people in your life are experiencing good memories and that you're being responsible, making sure that your world is not going, you know, like going into a chaotic mode. An introverted intuition will do so by future pacing and just allowing your mind to form new patterns and watching that work. So it's really a matter of if you're an introvert of not just spending alone time, but specifically spending introverted time that caters to your introverted process. And what you're saying, what you're, what, you're, what Antonio's talking about here is the energy management element of that. So as an introvert, you need to first and foremost be responsible to make sure that you're meeting the needs of that function you lead with and you're regenerating your energy. You're regenerating your batteries on a regular basis because the world's not going to give that for you. I mean, the world might give you some introver- some introverted time, but you still have to focus on the activity during that introverted time to make sure you're regenerating your energy. That's critical for you yeah. as an introvert. Yeah, so that's the first thing. Like if you're if you're struggling with energy management, uh, the first go-to is making sure that your dominant function is getting enough attention. And then on the flip side of that, you also have to make sure that your dominant function isn't working overtime. So you want to spend just a tiny bit of attention and time and effort into your inferior process. For an INFP, that would be extroverted thinking. So that would be getting things done in your world. You know, making sure that you, I don't know, sometimes it's just creating a list of things that need to get done or checking something off of that list. So you need to be doing enough of that too so that your dominant process doesn't feel overtaxed. Yeah. So once you have that component of energy management down, that's like a general energy management. And and for whatever personality type you you are, just go look up what your dominant process is and what your inferior process you know are, what we call the driver and the three year old. And then make sure you're spending most of your time in the driver process and at least a little bit of time in that three year old process. But as far as it goes with growth, it personal development is one of those things that we have to set aside time and energy in order to pursue. It's kind of like exercising. It's not easy, especially in the beginning. When you first start this process, just like when you go to the gym in the beginning, it is like, it's it's just painful. It's painful to get yourself there. And it's so exhausting. But once you find yourself in a routine of doing it, then you find yourself low energy if you don't go exercise. And personal development is very similar. Once you get into a space of frequently going to your co-pilot process, at first it's a massive energy hog, but you eventually get to a point where if you don't do activities that cater to that co-pilot process, that's when you feel low energy. Yeah. And the other thing, so just like when you're starting with a new diet or you're starting at the gym, you have to set time aside. So you're starting off, you're, let's, you're an INFP, obviously, Sarah, that wrote in or called in. And especially for you as an INFP, you start, you, you make the time during your day to focus on this. But ultimately, what you're going to want to do, just like with a diet, you'd start off like really having to remember, oh, I can't eat this, or I got to eat this, or I got to do this exercise if you're trying to get fit. Just like when you're starting off with one of those development things in the physical realm, personal development works the same way. You first start by rem- like maybe setting a timer at lunch to do something around your extroverted process for 20 minutes and maybe later in that evening. But eventually, the point is you're going to want to integrate this into all of your daily experiences. So when you are being extroverted, you can then try to develop that co-pilot function during that same period of time. So you don't have to be extroverted at your work on all these different fronts. And then later, you still have to be extroverted on top of that to develop your co-pilot. You want to begin to integrate this into your actual identity, into your personality of how you show up to the world holistically. This is the ultimate place for an introvert where you want to be in the world when you're extroverting in the outside world. Now, that might be challenging. You you in a work environment might have a bunch of to-do lists and things that put you into, as an INFP, for example, into your inferior cognitive function, your inferior process, which is that extroverted thinking or effectiveness process. You've got to get things done. That's very wearing on you as an INFP. So you got to find ways where you can take those, maybe those to-do lists or those activities during the day and bring in elements of that exploration process, that extroverted intuition, which is your co-pilot, and start to graph those things together. Start to make that part of how you show up every day. It's going to be a little bit here and there at first. It might be just when you're out at lunch, you know, on your lunch break, maybe you normally would grab a book and sit by yourself and eat at the cafeteria somewhere at work or go to a, a coffee shop or a sandwich shop close by. Maybe during your lunch break, you go and you push yourself a little bit during just 20 minutes. You eat for 20 minutes, have that introverted time. And then the second 20 minutes, 
you spend time maybe meeting random people on the streets, just really pushing yourself, or maybe messing with somebody as a as an extroverted intuition experience. Like you're you go up and when you do the checkout counter with somebody, you say a little joke or you mess with them a little bit and see what their reaction is. And just something really small every day you do on your lunch break, for example. And then you begin to incorporate that more and more and more throughout your day as you're extroverting. You start to do other things and bring other elements that are a little bit more risky for you, a little bit more scary, push you a little bit further. And this starts to become something that, you know, as you stretch your comfort zone, it becomes less and less out of your comfort zone. You start to have to stretch yourself more and more and more. And you're going to see yourself over time begin to develop this. It's going to graft into your personality. It's going to graft into your daily experience. It's going to be part of your identity. And over time, it's going to be tough at first, but over time, you'll start seeing massive results because you're making it part of your daily experience. Yeah, that's a really good point. When you are extroverting throughout the day, make sure you're using extroverted intuition. And even if the context doesn't seem like it's appropriate to use extroverted intuition, that's kind of the point of the process. <laughs> don't get yourself fired yet, but you know. Don't get yourself fired, but extroverted intuition is about pushing things out of comfort zones for yourself and others. So I mean, if it feels uncomfortable, you're probably doing it right. I think that's the important thing to remember is that you can... You can integrate your extroverted process into whatever you're being forced to do during the day. And by forced, I say that loosely, but whatever, however your environment or your world has been crafted at this point, simply implement your extroverted co-pilot into your daily activities. Like Joel just mentioned, I think that's a great idea. The second thing to remember is that not every extroverted process is social. And most of the time when people are talking about energy management when it comes to being extroverted, they're usually talking about their interactions with people. People are draining to them. And not every extroverted process is specifically people oriented. Now that makes it a little more challenging because say like, let's say you're an IFJ and your auxiliary process is extroverted feeling or harmony. And that means that whenever you're socializing throughout the day, you are using your co-pilot. Like for an IFJ, the world does kind of force IFJs to get into their auxiliary process a lot because they're constantly having to socialize. Now, to up the game for an IFJ is not to simply socialize or interact with other people, but specifically to make connections and to help create harmony in their world and not to avoid conflict. So they just have to sort of up their game a little bit. But the the world forces them into that space anyway, so they might as well just do it while they're there. When you're using something that's less social, like say extroverted intuition or extroverted sensing, the most of the time when you're extroverting, you're engaging with people and neither of those processes are specifically social. They're more about playing around with the environment around you. But what's nice about that too is that, that means that after your day is done and after you've gotten some high quality regenerative introverted time, introverted as in like regenerating specifically your dominant function, then when you go do things in your co-pilot process, it doesn't mean you have to go seek out people. If for extroverted intuition, it could be simply like getting lost in your city and trying to figure out your way back without a map. It could be trying new foods. You could go to the restaurant all by yourself, but you're trying a brand new food. It could be, it's basically anything that's outside of your comfort zone and you just go do it, but you don't have to necessarily be social while you're doing it, which might help, it might help that transition time of getting into it more and more. With extroverted sensing, it's getting into your body. So that doesn't mean you have to necessarily be social while you're doing that, but it's doing activities that's like dancing and physical expression and maybe people watching and reading people's body language and trying to get really good at reading what people's like body language, their nuanced body language is. Anything that will get you into your adrenaline space is also extroverted sensing. So you can do a lot of these activities without having to engage with people. Yeah. And if you're like an ITJ, for example, your extroverted thinking is your growth state. We call it effectiveness. It's about managing resource making projects happen, getting things done in the external world. And resources can sometimes involve people, you know, human resources to some degree, but it's not always people focused. It's accomplishing something, building something, creating a plan, creating a master plan for something, helping create lists and organizing resources in order to accomplish metrics and objectives. And so it's not always like Antonia is talking about people centric or people heavy with things. And there's ways to access this growth state without having to be so involved with people a lot of times in, in your personality. So I think, I think the principles we take away from this are, we get it as an introvert, 
it can be really challenging sometimes to feel like the world forces you already to be so far out of your comfort zone all the time. Now we're asking you to go one step beyond and to focus that extroversion into growth. But again, that is the path of growth, getting outside your comfort zone and building that. So that is what we're suggesting. But we understand it can be challenging. Go easy on yourself. Find ways, find access points where you can grow yourself. Find, find ways, like you mentioned, you know, getting lost in the city. I know a, an I, IFP who decided to take a different route to work every day for a month. And sometimes they had to drive in the wrong direction to get back to work because they wanted to try to do something new every single day. And that's all they did for a month, just to test that out. They didn't do a lot of other extroverted stuff. That was the thing to try to develop. This is an INFP to try to develop their co-pilot, just to get lost around you know, on the way to work every day, try to figure a new way to work. So these little things you can start with. The other idea I had is, as you were talking, I thought of this idea of creating a bewitching hour for yourself. So if you're like an INFP, for example, have an hour in your day that you just, you can maybe pick it randomly every day. It's your bewitching hour where all of your extroverted activities during that bewitching hour, quote unquote, have to be focused around that growth process for you. So like, let's say it's between 11 and 12 on Tuesday. That's what you picked for Tuesday. During that time period, make sure you are conscious and active. Write it on your hand if you have to, or carry a little note card around with you, some of the ideas of what you could do during that time period. Try to focus your extroverted activities during that time period around your cognitive function that you're trying to grow and your co-pilot. These little ideas start small, build from there, and ultimately, what you want to do is this wants to be you want this to be integrated into your personality. You want this to, this discipline to be integrated in how you show up everywhere. Anytime you're extroverting, you're trying to access that copilot process as much as possible, and you're going to grow faster and faster and faster the more you can be there in everyday life. Yeah, well, and I would I would say that the actual real major goal is to have crafted your life so that you, when going into your co-pilot process, it is a pleasure and not a chore. Yeah. So if you find your life is overtaxing you, if you find your life is exhausting, then one of the things you can do concurrently with, you know, slowly building into that co-pilot process and not, I mean, do things that you enjoy, like Joel said. If you, if you're like, take for example, if you're quite overweight and you know that you have to go work out and you know you have to eat right, the worst thing you can do is like do, do a, an unsustainable transition from, you know, eating terrible and not exercising to like only eating the optimized foods and then going and exercising two hours a day. It's it just not, it's not going to last. Like, it, I mean, it's, it's one of those things you do when you have that little burst of energy in the beginning. And then it's, you know, I mean, you, you, you're going from zero to 60 and you just can't sustain that. So most people say that if you're trying to change your diet, change your habits to amp up slowly. And so in the transition time, make sure that, you know, if I, if you were quite overweight and you were trying to get into an exercise regime, I would go do something that you find fun already. Like something that you already enjoy doing. Is it like walking um, in like a, on a sunny day, or is it you know playing sp some specific sport? Maybe it's a team sport, or maybe you enjoy swimming, or whatever it is that you enjoy doing. That's what you want to start start with when you are encouraging your body to get into an exercise routine. And the same thing happens with cognitive functions. If you are not used to using your copilot process then you're going to want to start out with sustainable steps. You're going to want to start out doing things that you already enjoy doing and you know you enjoy doing them and then go toward that until until you're at a place where you're like, yeah, I think I can handle this. And then you expand a little bit. You push your comfort zone a little bit further out. And then you do that until you're like, yeah, I can handle this. And then you do it again. You just keep bumping out until until your comfort zone is actually quite wide. Like the person who's quite overweight they're going to get to a point where they're, you know, as the as they shed pounds, more and more exercises will become available to them because their body will be more limber. It'll have more energy in it. So that's going to it's it's very similar with this function with the the copilot function. That said, you also need to look around your life and ask ask yourself what in your life is encouraging you to stay out of your copilot. And if, it, if it's because, the, you know, your world is just exhausting to you, then what are the changes you can make? Again, going back to the, the metaphor of losing weight, 
if you're if you are surrounded by people that are encouraging you to eat poorly, then you might have to, you know, consider surrounding yourself with people who are encouraging you to eat well. And that might be painful. It might be painful to no longer hang out with people who are encouraging you to eat poorly. Or, you know, it might be painful to them and they might give you some kickback because you're now going in a different direction. Uh, if your world is encouraging you not to exercise, then you're going to have to figure out strategies to build a world, a lifestyle, an environment that encourages you to exercise. And it's the same thing. Look around your life and say, what is encouraging me to stay out of my co-pilot process? And am I going to have to make some pretty drastic changes in order to build a life that not only accommodates it, but actually actively encourages me to go there? So if you're finding yourself really low energy, too low energy in order to get into your extroverted auxiliary process then you know energy management's number one building slowly and sustainably is number two and number three is look around your environment and make sure that you've built a life a world an environment that encourages you to go there and the reward here is your brain will start to rewire itself your brain will start to adopt the habits the principles the disciplines and the and you're going to start showing up to the world without even trying because your brain going through these these dif- different disciplines, if you're stretching yourself, your brain's going to actually start to rewire itself. That I think differently now that I've spent so much time growing my co-pilot, and this will happen for you too. If you put discipline into this, it gets easier and easier to show up that way because your brain and your body literally rewire themselves for your for your sake. Yeah. And I think that's really a great benefit. Yeah. So, so what do you think? You just heard us. By the way, Sarah, thank you so much for the question. I think it's a great question. And yeah, hopefully that's really, very helpful for people. Really good question. And uh, what do you think? You've been listening to this conversation. Maybe you're an introvert. You've d- dabbled in growing your co-pilot process, or maybe you've been scared to, or maybe you've had success in it. We want to hear from you. You can leave a comment or ask a question directly below this PHQ episode over at personalityhacker.com. And we'd also invite you to subscribe to this podcast, as well as join our community of like minds over at facebook.com forward slash personality hacker or twitter.com forward slash personality hack, H-A-C-K. And if you have a question for us, you can actually ask a question that we can answer on this show, PHQ, by going over to personalityhacker.com forward slash questions. Our preference is you record a question like you heard here today. We can play it live on the air and then answer it. And you can also type in your question if you're unable to record it for some reason, whether it's audio challenges with your computer or you just don't want to speak live on the air. So please head over to personalityhacker.com forward slash questions so you can be a part of the PHQ show as well. My name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. And we will talk with you on the next PHQ questions from the Personality Hacker community.